Hey everyone, I'm Craig and this is the Rise Infinity Solar Power Bank. But is it any good? This is the second product from Rise that I'm actually reviewing now. And to be honest with you, a month or so ago I've never even heard of them. So let's check it out and see how this goes. I haven't been looking for a solar power bank because I'm not really that interested. I'm always around a power supply. Whether I'm at my desk at work, I've got a wireless charger just there within reach. And then in my car, I've always got a wire in my car to charge it there. And I've got power banks that I can use anyway, but I hardly ever do. The thing is though, there's more than me now. So there's Emma and there's the kids. The kids have an iPad and a phone. And it's a bit of a nightmare when it dies. So we try to avoid it where possible. That means taking plugs of us, and just in case we're somewhere we can charge it. Unfortunately, neither of them are wireless charging, so we try and keep it topped up to the max where possible. This makes that a little bit easier. With the sun coming out now, we're going to be spending more and more time outdoors, whether it's the beach or walking through the hills or the woods. And the kids are always going to want to play on their iPad or their phone on the way back, if not while we're there, especially if we go for something to eat or something to drink. It's just an easy way to keep them entertained and to make sure we've got power supply. The main difference between this and another power bank is the fact that this doesn't need to be plugged in to charge, technically. When I first got it, my first charger did plug it into the wall, but the idea is it can always top up the charge anywhere you're about by just unfolding it and it starts to charge automatically using solar power. And there's two solar power charger pads on there, so you've got one on the main body of it and you've got one within the leather flap as well. There is real leather, which is quite nice, nice little touch. It's rugged, I can just chuck it about anywhere, chuck it in a bag, chuck it in the hills, so I can technically take it anywhere I want. Size-wise, it's not too bad. It's about the height of a phone, but about the thickness of three. But it's light, and it feels robust. I don't feel like it's fragile, like I'm gonna break it. Um, the, the cover at first did feel a little bit loose, but there's actually only one wire in there. So if it does come loose, then it will be fine. The LED charging on the side is quite hard to see. They're like little tiny pinpricks, and it's hard to tell whether you've got one, two, three, or four lights on, especially in bright light, which when you think about it, that's where we're going to charge it, so that's where I need to see the charge most. It would be nice to have some kind of other way of checking. You do get quite bright, but not out in daylight. I like a nice little screen, it tells me the exact percentage. Especially when it's large. It's 8000 mAh, which means it'll charge my Note 9 twice, or my Note 9 and my iPhone, and I have about 1000 mAh to spare. Um, it will charge an iPad Pro 12.9 inch to around 80-85% from zero, which is nice. And again, if I'm working outdoors, or I've got my iPad outdoors, I can plug in and have it charged at the same time. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes. Speaking of charging though, there are two ports on this. Well, three technically. There's one for charging the power bank, and then there's two USB ports. One is 2.1 amp, and the other one, it doesn't tell you what it is, which is interesting. It is quite slow though. I plugged one eight, Note 9 in when it was on about 15%, and it said four and a half hours to charge. So that's barely usable. But overnight, if you were camping or if you're using this indoors, which I'll get to in a second on my theory on that, then, I don't know, four and a half hours, it's a long charge, but it doesn't really matter, right? Because at the end of the day, it's going to plug in overnight. So if you're camping, you can charge it up in the day, in the daylight, and just leave your devices charging overnight. It'll be dead by the time you wake up, but your phones will be 100%, and it doesn't matter how long it takes because you're asleep. Speaking to Emma, I mean, we are a power-hungry household, um, but I'm also an advocate of saving the planet and using less energy, breaking down your carbon emissions and recycling a lot. So in theory, I could use this to charge the devices overnight. I could charge it up solar powered over the day and then plug my phones into it overnight and be 100% charged to start the day and then just use it to charge up again using the sun, the almighty sun, and do the same again the next night. So in theory, I can cut my emissions by not charging my phones from the mains and the walls, which is nice. I've not had a chance to try that yet because I've never managed to spend enough time in the sun to charge it up. Brings me to the next point, you can't really charge this in a window. I've tried leaving it in the kitchen window, which gets quite bright, uh, but it's not charging at all. It's not going up at any percentage, which is a bit of a bummer. I do, I'm, I'm guessing I do technically need to be outside somewhere with it on a bench or in a field, outside a tent on the beach, and I will charge up. I've tried it a few times. It did actually work in the works window, which I'm guessing isn't double glazed, and our windows are. Maybe that's the difference, maybe that's why. Maybe it's just brighter light, who knows. Point is, can't charge it at home, can charge it in work. In work, probably more useful. It does say that I was always a bit concerned about how long you leave it charging for. If I leave it in the daylight all day, is it going to be okay? Is it going to break it? Apparently it does come with a smart IC chip. I think smart just gets labelled about these days. It's like, it's like everybody says everything is smart these days, right? But it says it will protect from overheating and overcharging and overcurrent. So I'm guessing if you plug something in that 
withdraws too much power, it's not going to go over the 2.1 amp it's designed for. And also, if it's in bright sunlight all day, it's not going to overcharge and frazzle and die itself. Die itself? Kill itself. The LED light on the back is pretty cool, pretty pointless feature. But if you were going out camping, it's got a bright LED panel on there. Boom. I mean, that's pretty cool. It is bright, it is, and it's got another mode to do. SOS, apparently. Because who knows when you might need to be saved with Morse code, right? I could use that beauty light and have a look. Rave! Ow. But yeah, I think that's the end of spot in my bag. I carry wires in my bag anyway, which again is a bit of a downside. You do need wires around with this. But I carry them in my bag. I've got like a little pouch to keep wires for every device going in there. I could charge a lot off this. I say I can do my phones, I can do my, uh, my blood sugar monitor, because that's micro USB, so I just need a USB wire for that. I could technically take my watch charger station with me and plug it into this. Anything that's got a USB to charge it could technically be powered off this. And if it's charging up at the same time, it'd be interesting to see how long and how many devices you could actually do. Does that actually give you any stats on how long it takes to charge? I'm guessing that's because different days are going to charge it faster than other days. But yeah, I'll, I'll keep you updated. Follow me on Twitter and follow me on Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and I will let you know how this thing gets on as well as more reviews and more tech videos and other videos coming soon. So subscribe, hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified when I do a new video. Peace. Do I talk too fast? That's something I should, I should work on. Wait, can you understand me? Or do I just jabbering on very fast at a high speed? Blah.